The last time I went drifting when I got home, I noticed a potential problem or thought about a potential problem. I thought, you know what? When I'm drifting, I'm never looking at the dash. Like, I have no idea what's going on there. I don't know if the oil pressure light's on. I don't know if the temperature is going up. I do when I'm like waiting in line, but when I'm sending it, I'm never looking at the dash. The engine in my car is actually pretty well maintained, well looked after engine. I don't want to spoil that. I always see so many E46s on Marketplace and I'm like, oh, they're pretty cheap. And you look at it, everything's good. It's got, you know, BCs or whatever on it. Uh, and then it's like blown head gasket. And I get it, there's sometimes you can bring them back from that, but most of the time these motors, they're never the same once you cook them. So I ended up getting this. Engine guard, overheating engine alarm. Yeah, buddy. So this thing's pretty cool. It's kind of universal, as in the temperature sensor can be not just for the engine, you can put it on anything. Transmission, steering, um, and it's got some other inputs as well, um, like low oil pressure or low voltage. Um, I'm probably gonna put the other one to low oil pressure. You can get other versions of these online. I haven't even really sussed out how this thing works yet, so let's see how it works. Consider these examples. You lend the vehicle to someone and they don't watch their gauges. That's me, except I don't watch the gauges on my own car. $120 Australian for one input and $140 for two inputs. So we get the gauge and then I think you can set the temperature to whatever you want for the alarm to go off. Said alarm, all the sensor inputs. Basically, instead of having to put a temperature sensor in the coolant, this just bolts onto like the engine block or your gearbox or whatever you want to check the temp on. Should be pretty straightforward, I reckon. And this um, buzzer, it's just a 12 volt output so you could if you didn't want the buzzer you could have a light or you could attach the buzzer and a light or even i was thinking down the track maybe if i had it going to a relay to a washer bottle with squirter jets on the radiator so if it triggers too hot it automatically like sprays water jets on the radiator but that's down the line we'll get this sorted it should be pretty straightforward anyway first thing we're going to do find a good location to mount this on the engine now according to the instructions they say basically anywhere on the head or the block, not on the exhaust manifold side. Makes it tricky because there's heaps of space on the exhaust manifold side of one of these. Not so much on the inlet manifold. <laughs> so, uh, will we come from underneath? Let's have a look. All right, looks like there's a little earth strap up there right next to the engine mount. That might be the go, I think sort of halfway up the engine block and it's not sort of interrupting anything else. Yep, that might be the winner. Of course, it was one of those bolts that was too loose to use a ratchet on, but too tight to get off with my fingers. Gotcha, bitch. Gotta love BMWs. That fits good on that bolt. I couldn't film it because it's nearly impossible to get to. That's it right there. Pretty much right in the center of the block. Right next to the, shut up. Right next to the left-hand engine mount. So kind of tricky to get to, but a good spot there, I think. Fed the wiring up underneath. Be plenty of it. And then I'll think I'll just run a grommet through my firewall there. So after using the bluntest hole saw in existence, I fed the wiring for the temperature alarm into the cabin. I can use this to run the wiring for the oil alarm as well. Uh, now we just got to run the one for the oil pressure, which could be a bit more tricky, just because it can be hard to access the oil pressure switch. I'll show you. All right, oil pressure switch. That one, that's not it. <laughs> so that's the oil temp. Um, so you'll notice it's got two pins on it. Oil pressure switch is just a switch, so it's just an on-off circuit, so it only needs one wire. So it's got two pins. The oil pressure switch under there, but it actually faces that way. That's a bit tricky to find. Too much bullshit in the way. I don't even know how I'm going to show you this. Far out. There you go. That's the oil pressure switch there. So probably easiest to access from underneath. Oh, there we go. And this is how you know. One pin. So another way to confirm it is if you disconnect this, 
and turn the ignition on, you won't see your oil pressure light show up at all. Because um, it's a normally closed switch, uh, which means when you've disconnected it, it's open circuited and it won't pick it up. And just another angle from the top, right there. Always pointing that way, not that way. My next step was to strip back some of the insulation on the battery pressure switch wire so I could join my alarm wire onto it. But poor visibility and incompetence caused me to strip it repeatedly until it broke. Whoops. I just, I couldn't see up there. I thought it wasn't stripping, but it must have, and I just kept doing it until it broke. We can fix this super easy. There we go, all fixed. I just put some heat shrink around it and then I just spliced the oil pressure alarm. So I'll plug her in now. All right, so if it's all hooked up properly again, we should have the oil light back on. Phew. We can also check for continuity at the new cable. The one end that goes to the oil pressure switch and then another one to an earth. There we go. Cool, that's good, that means we got continuity which means that it's connected properly to the oil pressure switch so happy days we've run our two wires to the sensors this one's for the engine over temp and this one's for the oil pressure switch um, that was probably the hardest part and now we just got to hook the ye old controller up to power which is these two bad boys pretty simple we're just going to run this to an earth or you can run it to just anywhere on the body this one to a power source that's switched to ignition so not a constant power source the only thing with this in the instructions is it says to run a 5 amp fuse, which is fine. You can just get an inline fuse to run in line with the wire to whatever you're tapping the power off. Or you can get a piggyback fuse, which looks like this. and goes into the fuse box. Since I've removed a lot of accessories from this, like the radio and all that, I'm just going to use power from one of those old power sources like the radio. And that way I've got the fuse for this is just integrated into the fuse box. All right, found one. 28 which is lower, which I don't have anymore, which is that green wire. So because I've got it fused here, all I've got to do is just connect the wires up. I connected my earth to the bus bar behind the dash. This is a handy point because I know where all my earths are if I have any issues. The temperature alarm has no polarity, meaning it doesn't matter which way around the wires are connected. I chose to mount my alarm next to the steering column, but you can mount it anywhere as long as you can hear it when you're on the rev limiter. And I'll just relabel that fuse. Temp alarm. I try and do a good job with wiring and stuff just because if I ever sell it, at least the next person might be scratching their head. Let's fire this baby up and see how we go. Looking good. It's good sound. Yeah, and that's good because that means that's the alarm two going off, which is for the oil pressure switch. So that's good. When we start it, it should go away. Now warm it up. See if we can trigger the over temp alarm. Is that 84? It's set to 85. She's getting hot. She's getting hot. Yeah, it works. That's what we want. And I can set it to trigger at whatever temp, so. And, ah, oh, good. Looks like uh, if you just hit set, that uh, mutes it, but it still uh, flashes. All right, there you go. So it looks like the average temp was 85, um, and it said in the instructions, we just set it to five, degrees over which is 90 which that's what it's set to go off at and then this is the next setting that's just for zero that's for the oil pressure switch so it just means if it has a reading of zero it will alarm which makes sense as well so yeah pretty good all right that's awesome that gives me a lot more confidence now knowing that probably about a day's oh no it's probably about half a day's work it takes me a day because i've got to film everything but definitely worth it i'll put a link in the description for the engine guard any questions about it in the comments love yous
see you in the next one.